Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Oh, hey guys, sorry for interrupting your video. I'm sure you've heard by now YouTube is coming to kill us. It could be at any moment and it could be because of the video that you're watching right now. Really, they'll use any excuse to get rid of us. And when that inevitably does happen, we want to be able to stay in touch with you. Please go right now to rebelnews.com, sign up there, leave us a little bit of your information so that when YouTube does deplatform us all together, we can tell you where we've gone and what happened to us. That's rebelnews.com. Com. Thanks, and back to your regular video. Sheila Gunn Reed for Rebel News at the site of the Grace Life Church building. It's Sunday, and I'm here in front of this empty church facility because even though this church was seized by the province of Alberta for being non-compliant with the public health restrictions on places of worship, I'm happy to report that on this third Sunday since the confiscation of the church, the joyful congregation I have come to know well that normally occupied this building at this exact same time on Sunday continues to meet, just not here. This Sunday they're meeting again in an underground location to avoid scrutiny, persecution, my word's not theirs, by the state. They've gone underground like the churches in China to worship the way they see fit, not the way the state allows them to do. Now, this is the church where the pastor here, Pastor James Coates, was arrested in his office on February 7th for breaching public health orders to limit his congregation to 15% of fire code capacity and also force his congregation to social distance and wear masks, something Coates and the congregation all say violates their religious freedom. So when Coates was arrested in his office, he was released on what is called an undertaking that would prevent him from preaching the following week. However, he did, and ultimately he ended up turning himself into provincial authorities on February 16th. He spent 35 days in jail in the maximum security Edmonton Remand Center before he was released. Coates also spent the first two weeks of that confinement in solitary COVID confinement because unlike Grace Life Church, the remand facility has had several outbreaks of COVID-19. Now Coates still faces trial May 3rd to 5th for violating the public health orders. On April 7th, provincial health authorities here in Alberta, Alberta Health Services, and the federal police, the RCMP, a private fencing contractor and a private security firm named Paladin moved in here to take possession of the property of the church and execute an earlier closure notice issued back in January. The government is trying to prevent these Christians from gathering together each and every week. But arresting their pastor didn't stop them, as Associate Pastor Jake Spence took to the pulpit for each and every Sunday of the five weeks that Coates was in jail and he preached to capacity crowds. The roads here still remain blocked to the north of the facility and there is no stopping on these roads so you have to walk up to the church from about a kilometer up the road. But the RCMP presence here that was initially so heavy that it garnered international attention is diminishing week by week. Private security contractor Paladin is providing around-the-clock monitoring of the church, I guess, in case any Christians get the pesky idea that they might want to pray indoors. I can't even imagine to begin the exorbitant cost to the taxpayer of what's been occurring here. I'm going to file for access to information to find out exactly how much the ongoing persecution of the Grace Life congregation is costing us all. Between the constant police surveillance, the private security, the three fences around the church, the roadblocks, and the court case approaching next week, May 3rd to 5th, the cost has got to be enormous. But all of this is a waste of money at the end of the day because none of it has stopped the church from meeting together as they say they're called to do each and every week, in person, unconstrained by the government, because the government, it would seem, grossly misunderstands Christian theology or even what's happening here. For Grace Life, they must not forsake the in-person meeting of their congregation every week, which is exactly why arresting their pastor for 35 days didn't stop them. I was with them last Sunday as they gathered for an outdoor service, approximately 300 of them. It's why arresting their church now for three consecutive weeks hasn't stopped them from meeting either. 
The congregation is meeting right now as I film this video, as their church remains in prison. They'll meet next week, whether it's here or at another rotating, undisclosed location. Because for Grace Life, the congregation is the church, not the steel and concrete and fencing and parking lot that sits behind me. For Rebel News, at the site of the ongoing government occupation of a Christian church west of Edmonton, Alberta, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed, and it is one heck of a great day for an outdoor church service. YouTube is coming to kill us. We know that much is true. We want your help to be able to stay in contact with you. Please go to rebelnews.com, give us a little bit of information so we can tell you exactly where we've gone and what happened to us when YouTube eventually deplatforms us altogether. That's rebelnews.com.